Uh, you know, I, I would like to continue uh, in my capacity as the papal representative and to say to you that the problem we have in the Caribbean and the problem we have among the, the African peoples, the Hamite peoples, the Negro peoples, besides the fact that we came from slavery and we came from poverty and we are so anxious, you know, if you look at the Haiti, a very great and great and mighty nation of people uh, whom have been so instrumental in our struggle for liberation and to defeat the Europeans. And we have lost track of all that, even so much so that I heard that people were trying to be abusive and to be discriminatory towards the Haitian immigrants whom have came to settle on the island of Dominica. These people are needed. These people are necessary. Dominica is Haiti. Haiti is Dominica. A Haitian should not even need a passport to come to Dominica. When that Haitian land, they should just be welcome. As a matter of fact, the truth is any person. You see, if you go to Israel and you land there and you're Jewish, you don't need a passport. So long as you tell them you're a Jew, you're home. You got the right to return. So I want to say to you all and to all of you, who want to speak ill of the Haitians, who want to mistreat the Haitians, the people whom God have forgotten, the people who exist in misery and whose only hope is to go from misery to poverty with dignity. I tell you, wherever you meet a Haitian person, you have to help them. These are the children of God, the sons of Ham, the descendants of Francois Macandal, the defenseless of Toussaint, Louvatier, and Bookman, the people who defeated Napoleon, who defeated the French Empire. They had no allies. They didn't have Russians to help them. They didn't have China to help them. All they had was themselves and faith in themselves. And Mackendall was a fierce leader. You see, we, we, we take on the persona. We take on the mantle of Mackendall that we may forward with the struggle. You see, today, most leaders and most leadership and most people are just starved for money and for sex and for power. You see, they don't have any ideological grounding. They're not in their hearts and in their souls looking to build a nation, looking to build an institution. And then if you say you're sending people to go and get education, right? And you're so involved in it. And we got some reports. We got lots of reports, but we don't talk about that. Okay, because down there, like the lady told me, she said, Peter, you go to the bank. You don't care what you look like. <laughs> you don't care what the man look like. But the man trying to cocaine you. You want to cocaine you so you can get a load. You cannot get a load unless you cocaine the man. You see, I don't do those kind of things. I wouldn't give a person a job just so I can cook with them. I, they cannot cook with me to get a job because if you come in to work for me, you're going to produce. And if you're not producing, you cannot work for me. You know, so I'm not going to cocaine you so you can get a job and I have to pay you. No, that don't work that way. That's what my wife is for. That's what my lovers are for. That's what my prostitutes are for. Okay, I go. I may I say, hey, hi, come. You know what do you need? Are you gonna need five hundred? Are you gonna need a thousand? Hey, meet me this evening, we'll have some wine, we'll have dinner, and then we'll make love. I make love to all of them, but you all operate on a different standard. Okay? You put money in the aid bank, the guy that doing the loan in the aid bank, he wants to cook here all the women. You know you care what they look like or what he look like. But when you look at me. I don't have that issue. You understand? I don't have to do a quid pro quo. Um, even to <laughs> to deal with, with young people. But I know what you all been doing, okay? And I'm telling you, the first mistake that we have done and we've 
did for generations now is that each one of us have an independent flag, okay? Besides the fact that we are already uh, divided on each island by village and by dialect, we now have, you know, a St. Lucian flag, a Grenadian flag, a Dominican flag, a Matnica is part of a French colonization arrangement still to this day in the 21st century. Huh? Uh, we don't have no liberation movement in, in Martinique and in Guadeloupe to fight for the independence of the African peoples. The Europeans rule there with the utmost of arrogance. I have visited both places and had an opportunity to see how Europeans behave. And those Europeans are extremely arrogant. Now, I want to tell you this. We cannot continue to exist with all these different flags. Our ideology doesn't go on, go with that. We're ideologi ideological people. You understand? The only thing that have come great from the Caribbean since slavery is Fidel Castro Ruz. You know, Fidel took that little island of Cuba and he molded it and he molded its people. And he became so strong and so powerful and so globally influential that he was able even to send 500,000 human beings, soldiers, to fight in Angola, to fight in Namibia, to fight in the Congo. His biggest mistake was to send troops to Ethiopia to support Mengustu Hoyle Mariam. But nonetheless, you did not or you could not read of Fidel telling somebody that if you're going to get a scholarship to go to this and this university, you had to give me fellatio, or I have to give you coloringos. <laughs> you understand? Fidel didn't go for that. As a matter of fact, there was a guy, very handsome man too, very well-to-do general who was in Angola. And he, um, he smuggled some diamonds. He was caught. Um, smuggling diamonds and Fidel didn't tolerate that so he was convicted and he was executed and it was kind of like wow this guy Fidel he doesn't play and Fidel said that he said we didn't go to Africa for its diamonds we didn't go to Africa for its oil because one has to wonder when the Soviet Union collapsed and the Cubans needed help I mean, and, and possibly a lot of African countries who recall the favors Cuba did for them, including our commandante, um, Samora Machel, Samora Moise Machel, the liberator of Mozambique. And Fidel said in a speech, he said, look, 100 years ago, we were the pearl of the Spanish empire and we produced enough sugar to keep Spain as a powerful colonial power. So what make you think because we are not getting oil from the Soviets, because we don't have foreign currency, we cannot function. And the Cuban people have so much discipline. Fidel said, you know what? We're gonna ride donkeys. We're gonna use cows. We're gonna walk. We're gonna ride bicycles. He got bicycles from China. They had donkeys, they had horses. And you know, on some islands today, I remember growing up and there were donkeys and I go to look for a donkey. Donkeys give you the best type of fertilizer. As a little boy, I used to go by the different people and steal their donkey poo-poo. The people were so wicked, they wouldn't even give you donkey poo-poo. If they see you're gonna do something with it, that's the nature of the Negro and especially of the illiterates. They always want to pull one another down. So this question here is,